Hello everybody, this is Shirley and welcome to So To We Begin Embroidery. Thank you for coming back by and I want to send a shout out to all of you that have uh, viewed my last video and sent me these wonderful sentiments of welcome back and glad that I'm feeling better and all of the wonderful things that you had to say, positive thing. I am so thankful. It is so great to know that people do care about you and that you most likely are giving them something that they're interested in enough to come back, look at the video, and also, like I said, to put a comment on uh, welcoming me back. I do appreciate that. And for those of you that are new, if you have not subscribed and you, you stop by and look at my video, I do know that I have a lot of views, but I don't have a lot of subscription. It would be greatly appreciated if you would subscribe, hit the notification bell so you'll know when I do another video, and also share the videos with your co-workers, your colleagues, and other people that may have the same interests in the things that I talk about. So I do appreciate that. So remember to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Comment and hit the notification bell. So as I mentioned to you on the last video, I stated that I was going to talk about my design center on the Brother PR1055X. Now I did have the opportunity to take a few little um, tutorial classes online and learn just a little bit about the design center. Everything is uh, the very basics. So I'm going to show you what I've learned and also show you the project that I did. One will be the project that I did during the tutorial and the other one will be the project that I did on my own after um, completing that those particular lessons. There are several more lessons that I have to go through to learn and as I go through them and, and feel comfortable with them then I will present them to you. Also I just wanted to encourage everyone to view this all the way to the end because I will be giving you a little tip about the machine uh, the 1055X and it's not just a uh, related to the 1055X. The 1050 also um, has pretty much the same features. There are just a few features that the 1055X has that the 1050 does not have. But most of the things that I discuss are very synonymous with the 1050. So what I'm going to do now is put the camera on my uh, L L LCD screen and talk you through what I have learned, talk about the icons on, on one page, what they do, and then show you what I've done. So I'm going to get the camera set up for that and then I'll be right back. Okay everybody, I am back. Uh, actually, it's been a couple of days since I uh, recorded the first part. Uh, my my mic went out and I was trying to order another one. I got another one. It didn't work with the camera. Had to order another one. It didn't work with the current camera. Camera. The first one I couldn't even pair up, so I couldn't use it at all. The second one that I just got in today paired works, but didn't work with the old camera. So I had to pull out uh, my Canon camera, which is a much more expensive camera however it has all of these bells and whistles that I'm not quite familiar with so I'm trying to learn how to use the camera um, as well as learning everything else so anyway just wanted to let you know that it took me a few days to get back online with this lesson that I want to talk about so as I mentioned in the previous um, introduction is that I'm going to go into my design center and as you can recognize this as the um, screen that comes up when you turn your machine on you know what all of these icons are for hopefully 
Um, if not, then I think I went over them in um, previous videos. So I'm going to my design center and um, I have to. Okay. I'm not going to recall what I had in memory because I don't even remember what it was. So we're going to start with a clean. Well, I thought I was going to start with a clean slate, but I didn't. What you see up here is what I uh, did or started doing with um, a tutorial. And I think I was trying to recreate the tutorial for you guys. So what I'm going to do is clear all of this so I can go ahead and, and start with a clean slate. So this is the screen that you see when you go into my design center. Now I do know that those of you that have a baby lock 10 needle machine or Solaris or Dream Machine and maybe a couple of other baby lock machines and if you also have a um, I think it's the Dream Machine for, for Brothers. I know it's the Stellar for Brothers and of course the Brother 1050 all have um, Dream My Design Center and the Baby Lock has the IQ Center. They're synonymous. There may be a few different icons or something like that, but they mean the same. Now what I did discover, which is also true for the 1050, as Brother comes out with new machines, they tend to upgrade and, and, and add more. So the tutorial that I took, the lady was presenting it with a baby lock ballant, I believe. And it must have been an older model because it didn't have a lot of the newer stuff that I have on mine. And, and I, of course, have the Brother PR 1055X. But the concept is the same. So you have your image scan, line design, illustrative design, and all of that you just you can scan in an image with your scanning mat you can once you scan you can either scan in a line design which oh sorry bump my camera line design or illustrative design which is more complex and then you can of course save it to your um, machine and let me see if I have anything in there saved I obviously do not or it hasn't pulled it up yet it's still grayed out, so I'm going to say I don't have anything saved, so I'm going to hit cancel. Come out of there. So, again, this is what you see. Icons down here are pretty much self-explanatory, but I'll go over them quickly. Of course, you have your magnification uh, icons here where you can make things larger or smaller, and that is very important when you're designing things in my design center or IQ center because you do all of your work here. Now you can view it up here and make it larger or smaller and move it to certain areas, which I'll be doing in my demo and be able to be more precise. So that's very important. This is your line region. This is your brush region and uh, where it call, it's called line properties. And this is called, I believe, region properties. And everything that you do is with that is a line or like using a pencil. Everything you do in the region property is more of a brush stroke, so it's thicker. And that is your region property. So it covers a, a wider uh, scope of area. So let's start off first. Um, we're going to start our first with the, with the line property, but I want to go over these two icons as well. This is your eraser, just like on the other side, on the other screen outside of my design. And this is your, um, your, um, shapes. And these are grayed out for now because we don't have anything to manipulate. This is your, um, your, your uh, selection tool 
our selection icon, which draws a square around whatever it is that you want to manipulate. You have to select it. So in order to select it, you have to hit this icon and they have different shapes for it. I have not uh, utilized anything but this one and go ahead and be able to manipulate it. So those and then, of course, you have your pencil, your um, your bucket, which will this will only do a line. This will do everything that's um, inside of the line. This will be your eye drop, which I've not used. This is for your stitches and this represents satin stitch. And I have other stitches that we'll look at once I hit. This is what they're calling the notebook or it is where your color options are and your different stitches and what have you. Down here is relatively the same thing. The only difference is we're dealing with the region property. So it has it uh, manipulates a greater space. So let's go into the notepad for the line property, your line property. So this these are the pencils and they can do different things. This one's straight line. This one is anything that you you draw will close. This one will be slanted. This one will be zigzag. That's what those are for. These are the various stitches that you can select. This one represents your satin stitch, your uh, um, line stitch, and this is a triple. I call this a star. I call this a diamond. I think this is a bean stitch and kind of a zigzag, a flower, and then this is no stitch at all. These are colors that you can select, which is important when you're making your design because you might want to have one area, one color, another area, another color, and so forth and so on, and you're able to select them individually as you go forward. So it defaults, I believe it defaults on black, the tutorial, uh, that I was watching her machine she said defaulted on red so I don't guess it really matters because the thing that that's important to understand is the fact that you can select your colors at will so I hit OK so now we're gonna go and create something so I'm gonna go into the shapes now you have different icons up here for shape let's go with this icon way over here first and that is important because it has your arms up here, your frames, as they call it, frame embroidery areas, your A arm, your B arm, your C arm, and so forth and so on, and then your cap arm. You may not have all of these arms on, listed on your machine, depending upon the machine that you have, whether or not it's been updated, and I guess it may even depend upon what hoops you've actually purchased. I'm not sure. These are the sizes of the hoops that are available with your machine. They do not include the sizes of hoops that are considered aftermarket. The ones that are considered aftermarket are, um, will not show up on here. So um, I'm going to select this size, which is the 8 by 12 hoop. And then my A arm is what I'm using. And then I'm going to, well, I'll hit OK. But let me tell you about this while we're in shapes. These are your regular shapes. These are your closed shapes, really cute designs. These are open shapes, more cute designs. This is memory. If you've saved anything, which I have, and then we're back here where we left off. So I will be using these shapes here to start off with. And um, well, actually, I'm not going to use this because um, I'm not going to do the demo with the circle and all of that. So we'll come out of that. And um, I'll, now that we've talked about all of that, I am going to go back in and I'm going to go here for shapes and I'm going to select that particular border. I'm going to hit OK. It's going to show up in my main screen. And this is the screen that you actually do all of your designs. This is your preview. So you can see up here what you've done down here. But you're able to move things around where you can 
um, use your magnification to make it larger or smaller so you can manipulate things. You can look at what stitches you have and all of the different things that you may have added to it. And um, now you see we have more icons that we can use, your size, your rotation, your mirror, your uh, cutting tool, and your duplication tool. Don't have, having used the clipboard, not quite sure exactly what that will do, but having used the clipboard. And then again, this is our selection tool. So once I have that up, what I want to do is make sure that it is inside the parameters of the 8x12 hoop. This is really close down. So what I'm going to do is go into size and I'm going to make this smaller so it to ensure that it doesn't touch the hoop and, and we get an error or I get an error message saying that I need to get a larger hoop or so forth and so on. Don't want to do that. So I'm just going to take the time to reduce it down just a little bit right at 7.5. And I mean, I could do it bigger than that, but I just, I just want to do it. I'm, this is good enough. So it's small enough, I think. Let me do it a little bit more. I'm going to get it back to 7.5, like I said. So one, mm, there we go, 7.5. So this is a square, so your vertical and your horizontal is 7.5. I'm going to hit OK. Now we have our border. And the next thing I'm going to do is select a stitch for my border. So I don't want my border to be satin. So I go into my um, my uh, notebook and I'm going to choose a different border and I think I'm going to choose the flowers. So I'm going to choose the flower. I'm going to choose um, a blue and then I'm going, well, actually, let me go into here. If I choose a flower, once I go into it and open it up, I realize that I have uh, the ability to choose other stitches. So I think I'm going to get this little Greek design. That's really cute. I like that. So I'm going to use the Greek design and I'm going to use the blue, which I highlighted, and I'm going to hit OK. So this should be... Okay, so now the next thing I have to do is hit my bucket. And by hitting the bucket and taking my stylus and touching, I have just converted that to the Greek border in blue. And because the lock icon is not up here to choose, I have to do each one of them separately for this one. So I'm going to touch the line in each one and they all should be blue. I'm going to hit next and there it is. You can see what I chose. Now that I've chosen it and I see it, I don't like it. So I'll go back and I'm going to change that because that does not look very good in that particular design. So don't ever hit set until you're ready. Go back to return. And I'm going to go back in here and I am going to select a different um, stitch. So I'm going to stick with the diamond. I've used the diamond before. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before is make sure I uh, hit all of these. So let's see what's happening. Did they all change? Uh, they look like they all change. So let's go here. And I'm going to hit my selection tool. I'm going to circle this one. And just, this is just to see it, not to do anything with it. And move it down. And I'm going to put this back. But I wanted to make sure you can see it. So there's the diamond. So I have it at 800. And let me move this around so you can see it. 
the diamond stitch. I'm going to put it back at 100 and then I'm going to put it back where it belongs. So, okay, that should be okay. Let's hit next, see what it looks like. So everything is the way I want it. Still not going to hit set because I'm still adding to this design that I'm creating. And then I will hit return. Now I'm able to put another shape in here. If I choose to, I'm going to go back to the clothes shape. And well, let's see this one. See if there's something here I want to select. I'm going to select this heart. Hit OK, put it in there. Now, as long as I don't touch this screen, the binding box is around the heart. Before, it was around the border and I can adjust the size. Now, it's around the heart and I can adjust the size and I can go into size and then I can make it smaller so it will fit neatly inside my bounding box and you can see I hope that it is getting smaller and there it is maybe it's smaller than I want it to be so I'm gonna make it just a tad bit bigger so that is my heart inside of my um, border so just a little bit bigger so now you can see it so I will hit OK and now I have a heart inside of the border with the diamonds. Now, what do I want this to stitch as? So I'm going to go into the notepad. It is still on diamond because that was the last thing I chose. Now I can do a straight stitch if I want or a triple stitch or I can do some of these decorative stitch. I can do a bean stitch. I think I'm going to go ahead and do a satin stitch and I'm going to do red and hit OK. So I hit my fill button. I tap that and you can see that it has turned red. Now, all of this is still open. I haven't used my region for anything. So I haven't colored anything at all. Now I can go into either one of these properties and do something really cute. But um, let me go into region into the notepad here. Now into the region notepad. This is the region property. This is your size of your brush or whatever you want that you're using in the region property and you can make it larger or smaller up here. You can have it a square or a circle or a dot and then you have the option of your your uh, satin stitch. This is no stitching. This is your stippling and this gives you beautiful quilting blocks that are really cute that you can utilize and that you can put in there or you can um, not do so. So what am I going to do for my heart? I am going to select something in my quilting. What do I want to select that I want to put in my heart that may look cute? I don't know. Maybe roses. Let's see if that's going to be cute. And I can select a color. I'm going to, since I already have the red board border, I'm going to select yellow for my roses inside of my heart. Now what I need to do for that to show up is hit the paint bucket here and then tap inside the heart. Oops. That made everything else a rose. So what did I do wrong? Hmm. Let me clear, go back and change and see what I did wrong. I have to think about that because it should have, okay, if I touch, if I put the paint bucket here, yeah, that's what I thought. So with that, and then I hit that in here, that's not what happened. It happened on the outside. 
so I'm a little confused. Oops, I hit this again. Let me let me think about it and I will come back to you and figure out what I, what I did wrong and I'll answer that. So I'll be right back. Okay, everybody, I am back and um, I think I have the resolution to the problem that was occurring. So as I stated earlier, I'm learning my design center and I'm telling you what I've learned. So I had to do some um, uh, retraining, I guess, is the best way to to state it. You won't believe besides the retraining, which was simple in a few minutes, that wasn't a big deal. Uh, it's taken me three days to get back, which is kind of funny. Uh, basically due to my microphone. The microphone that I did the last video on that had the echo, um, that particular microphone died. I think I mentioned that already. It, it just died and I was needing to get a new one. So I did order a new one. It came, could not get it to pair for some reason, have no idea. Could not get it to pair for, for, no, for no reason at all. I couldn't get anybody to work on it and get it to pair, just didn't pair up. So that meant I had to order another microphone, which I did, receive that. Then lo and behold, the camera I was using, my mic that I got, the new one, they paired up, but they wouldn't work on that particular camera. It's a camcorder, not a very expensive one. And supposedly when I ordered the mics, it said it works on camcorders, but I guess it means it works on expensive camcorders because it didn't work on my little cheap one. Anyway, thank goodness that I do have several cameras and I had to pull out my Canon um, EOS M50, I believe is what it is, much more expensive than the camcorder. And thank goodness it does work with that particular camera. So that was the reason why I just couldn't get back on to uh, complete this video. So I'm back now. So let's get started. I'm going to go into my design center. And I think I know what I did wrong. Well, actually not what I did wrong is what I didn't know or think about. So let me go into shapes. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make sure that I select the hoop size that I want to use to do my design. Does not mean that's going to be the size of the, of the design or the hoop I'm going to use, but I just want it to be the largest one so I can create the design. And I went over these before. And so I am using the A arm. So I'm going to close out of that. Um, so you have the red binding uh, block here. And you can see it up here and you can see it down here is in red. Hopefully you can see it, but hopefully you can see this and you can see that it's in red. So nothing can be stitched outside of the red binding box. So now I'm going to go back into my back into my uh, shapes and I'm going to go into the second one, which is closed shapes. Now, I think that is where my problem occurred because I did my uh, borders here. And then I tried to add this heart, but as you can see, it is an open shape. So because it was open, I'm assuming that's why when I touched it to color it inside, it did everything that was out. Does that make sense? It really doesn't make sense to me because uh, you'll see something that I'm going to show you um, Later on, as I mentioned, I had done a tutorial and I also created um, a design myself. I'm going to show it to you. 
So that was the only thing that I could figure out that probably was the issue. I don't know if that was the exact issue, but um, that was the only thing I could come up with at this moment. So let me go back and go ahead. I have the hoop side here. I'm going to go here. I'm going to put this in. Okay, we have it here. Then I'm going to go into size. I'm going to size it down to 750 just to make sure that if I stitched it out, it wouldn't have an issue with being too big for the frame uh, according to whatever stitches that I select. So I'm going to hit OK on that. So I want these four blocks to be um, diamond stitch and I want it in blue. So I selected the diamond stitch. Remember, satin stitch is default. I selected diamond stitch. I selected the blue color thread and I hit OK. So you can see it here is blue diamond stitch and it is in the line property. So what I'm going to do now is hit my fill bucket. Then I'm going to touch each border. Just tap it lightly. And then I'm going to hit next. So you can see each border is now um, diamond stitch in blue. So I'm going to hit return. I'm not going to hit set until I'm ready to, to set. So the next thing that I want to do is add something else to this little design. So I'm going to go back into close shape. And I'm going to get this teddy bear. I'm not going to go into the open shape. I'm going to stay in the closed shape. Hit the teddy bear. Hopefully you can see the red bind, bounding block around the teddy bear. I'm not going to touch the teddy bear. I'm going to go to size. And I'm going to reduce this down to three point something. So it will be smaller. Let's go down a little bit smaller, little teddy bear. So I got it at 2.93 um, horizontal and 312, 3.12 vertical. So I'm going to hit OK. So that's small enough. So now I want a different um, stitch. I don't want the blue diamond stitch. So I'm going to go back into my... Uh, notepad, I am going to select the bean stitch and I'm going to select this rust color and I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm going to hit my paint bucket and I am going to tap right there on my bear. Hopefully you can see that it has turned rust color and hit next. And there you go. You have your bean stitch. So now I have a diamond stitch for my border, bean stitch for my bear. I'm not going to hit set, go back to return. Now, what I want to do now, and hopefully this will work this time, I want to do a fill on my bear. I don't want it to stay like that. I want it to fill up. I want it to be a satin stitch. So I am going to um, hit my select tool and I'm going to select the bear. Hopefully I got everything. I'm going to hit close. I'm going to go down here into the region field. I'm going to hit my bucket. Um, I actually need to go back in here and change the color. It is satin stitch. It's brown. Hit OK. Now let me select it again and now close that, take the paint and then hit my bear. There we have it. Hit next. So this is going to be satin with a bean stitch. This is going to be blue with a diamond stitch. I'm not going to hit set yet. I'm going to go back to return. Now, what do I want to do now? I want to do something 
with my borders. So I am going to go back into my region field. I'm going to go here. These are stiplings. I am going to select. So I have blue. I am going to select what? Uh, let's say a lime green. Doesn't matter. Hit OK. Now I am going to attempt to fill these with the satin, with the um, stippling. So I'm going to, and I don't think I need to hit, um, I don't think I need to do the um, selection tool. I'm not sure. Let me see. Nope, I didn't. I thought so. So I'm going to hit each one of these. And as you can see, they have filled up with the lime color green and the stippling. And so this is what the design looks like. So I have a diamond shape border stitch with lime green stippling all the way around. I have a brown bear with bean stitch outline and I can add eyes and nose and things like that to it. Um, and so that is what I have. So if I'm okay with that, then I can go back, hit next, hit set. It warns me, it says it will be converted to an embroidery pattern and my design center will be exited. Now let me go back to cancel because what I need to do, since I created this, I'm gonna put it in the memory of the design center. So what that means is that um, I can pull this back up. So I'm gonna lock it and that is gonna, save the entire thing. I'm going to hit memory again and here and then return. So everything should be saved, all of my design. And then I can um, stitch it out. I can go back into next, go back into set and stitch it out. I can add, subtract, multiply, divide, whatever. I can put more stuff in here now if I wanted to. And I can always go back into memory. And let me show you. Let me go into my pocket and pull it up. And there it is. So it has been saved. This one has been saved as well as some of the other things that I've done. But um, it's here. So let me cancel out of there. I'm going into next and I'm going into set. I'm going to hit OK. And then there it is. I can now create that. I can embroider that out. So that's what I was trying to get to. Now, of course, it did not work for the other um, design that I was trying to use with the heart. The only explanation I can come up with is the fact that it was an open um, design and being open, it selected everything. I could not figure out a way to just select the heart, which is interesting to me because I'm going to show you now some designs, a couple of designs that I did that allowed me to do something other than this teddy bear. So I'm going to um, move over to my cutting table and I'm going to show you what I've already created. But this is just the first little lesson that I wanted to give you and show you just the rudimentary, rudimentary basics of using my design center. It's not actually complicated to use. It takes practice and understanding of what the machine is needing to be able to follow the command. So let me move over here to the cutting table. Okay, here is the um, 
design that I did following the tutorial. So as you can see, I have the borders, I have the stippling filling, I have the teddy bear field, and I have the lining. I also put eyes and nose and uh, buttons on there. So this is my design that I did as a tutorial. Okay, now I'm showing you the design that I did, that I created myself. So as you can see, I have a blue border that is diamond. And then I put the two roses and the leaves. And hopefully you can see, let me move it in a little closer, the cross marks. Now the cross marks, what I did, I did the border first. I, the shape was a square. Then I um, inserted the cross marks. Then I put the flowers and, 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 and leaves and bird and what have you. And the reason why I'm showing you this is that I took what I learned from the tutorial and I got kind of fast and, and uh, you know, full of myself, I guess, and figured out, okay, I got this. I can do this. So I created what I wanted. Um, I did the roses, which are on the open shapes like the heart, but I didn't have any issues with filling that in, which is interesting. And the bird and the leaves, they're all on that open shape page. And I didn't have any trouble filling them in. So that, that uh, is something that is confusing to me. So I have to figure it out. The other thing that I want to point out, and I'm showing you where the cross marks are at the bottom by the leaves, you can see that some of them are missing. Now, let me explain what happened. You all may have figured it out. Because I put the cross marks on, I did the border, I did the diamond shape, I did the blue. Then I did the yellow uh, designs, layering that on because you're doing by layers. I wanted to do that because everything else needs to go on top so I could manipulate the, the sizes and, and, and colors and what have you. But the leaf at the bottom, as I was manipulating the size to get it the way I wanted, I didn't realize at the time moving it and everything was uh, erasing part of the cross marks. So that's why they're missing. I did not realize that this is a learning process. So I now know better, or at least I know to go back, put them back in, and then um, be more mindful if I have to do some type of changing of size or what have you, because I, I changed the size of the, ro of the roses as well. And I also, duplicated the roses, moved them where I wanted it to be, and then I mirrored the roses so they would face each other. So and didn't have any any trouble with the the yellow cross marks. So why the leaves messed up, I don't know, but I'm still learning. So I just wanted to show you what I did as the tutorial with the bear bear. And then this is the one that I did on my own without any tutorial or, or di directives that I was following. I just did it based upon what I understood about using the design center. So with that, that is the end of this particular video. And thank you for watching. I hope this was informative and that you got something out of it. And if you did, can you please give me a thumb up? Also, uh, don't forget to hit the notification bell. And please, the most important thing, if you have not already subscribed, please sub subscribe to my channel. It's very important for me to be able to, to grow my channel with subscriptions so I can be able to continue to present the content that uh, most of you are fi finding to be very useful. So please hit the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up subscribe and look forward to seeing me the next time. And uh, oh, before I go, I just remember I promised you a tip if you listen to the video all the way to the end. And the tip is um, check 
and see if you've gotten any email or notification saying that there's an update for your machine. Because I got two emails a while back for my PR1055X. I didn't do anything about it. And as I was preparing to do videos again, I was going through my operation manual and I discovered in the back of the book that it gave me instructions for updates. And I remember that I had gotten some emails. So I went online and found the updates and I updated my machine. So if you have a brother PR 1055 X, the information for your how to um, update your machine is on page 192. So if you turn to page 192, it will tell you exactly what you need to do to be able to upgrade your machine. What I can tell you is that you need to have a blank USB uh, stick and that um, you need to go on to the website that it tells you to go to. It should recognize your machine. If you registered your machine, <clears throat> excuse me, if you registered your machine with Brother or Baby Lock or whatever you have, if you registered your machine, once you go online, your machine should pop up based upon your email or whatever you register it under, it should pop up and it will tell you what updates you have. I had two updates waiting for me. So I needed to upload two different um, updates and I followed the instructions and it told me what to do. It's very simple and it's very quick. So I just wanted to give you that tip to let you know that you need to see if you have any updates out there waiting for your machine so you can make sure that it, it stays on the correct version. So you can um, benefit for all um, any any update corrections or additional uh, features or what have you that has been put out for your machine. So just want to give you that little tip. And again, if you have a brother PR. 1055X, if you look in your at the back of your operation manual on page 192, it will tell you how to do it. <clears throat> if you have other machines, I would just look in the back of the book and see if you can't find it because that's probably where it's going to be and then follow those directions. So thank you again for watching and I hope you're well and look forward for a notification from me for my next video. Talk to you later.